Okay, so hello everyone, hope you're doing well. And today we're going to be finishing off with our stats videos and doing a mixed design in Nova. So here we're putting together the repeated measures that we did and our between groups and putting it all into one. We've got a task here. A group of researchers want to know of the effect of exercise on body composition in, in which they looked at lean mass, fat mass and percentage fat mass. And they took 28 people and analyzed their body composition pre, post, and three months post by putting them either in an exercise or a control condition. So first things first, we've got a repeated measures part in um, the way that we tested 28 people over a period of time. So we tested the same person pre, post, three months, and the same for the other 28 people. And because this is a between groups because we're putting people into two groups, exercise and control. So that's where that comes from. So we just need to do a factorial uh, mix turnover over to find out the differences in lean mass, fat mass, and percentage fat, fat mass in these 28 people. So let's jump into GMOV and see what's up. So yeah, it's always important to check for normality, but because um, uh, I'm not gonna be taught any non-parametric equivalent, I'm gonna leave that for now, and we're gonna jump straight in. So we've got participant, group, fat mass, lean mass percentage, and that's all pre. Then we've got post and uh, three months after. So we've got all the data here. So where we wanna go is ANOVA and then repeated measures ANOVA. Okay, so we've got our view here, which we're familiar with, with from the repeated measures. So again, we need to name our variables. So we've got time here. So we've got pre, post, and three month. So we put that there. And then our second is component. Or you can name that wherever you want, but um, yeah, that seems simplest to me. So what we have is we've got fat mass, lean mass, and uh, percentage fat. So let's put that in. And then what we can simply do is because we did it this way around, and that's how our data is seen here, we can just highlight everything and pop it in. So then you've got fat mass pre, lean mass pre, and so on. So it should all be good. And um, so yeah, so that's doing a re repeated measures on over right now, but because we also put our participants into two different groups, we need to add this group uh, factor here and that just goes in here. And that should sort all the participants into their groups and then hopefully Jamovi will load that up for us. Okay, so after 10 years of Jamovi loading, we finally got a table. So what does this show us? So first we've got time. So is there a significant difference in these results as the kind of experiment or intervention progress? So between pre and post, uh, and then pre and three months, and then post and three months. So because of this really large F value and this really low P value below 0 0.05, we therefore know that the, the difference is significant when considering time. If we take into consideration time and group uh, in which the participants were put into, there is no significant effect. However, there is a significant difference between the results of the components. However, we're not really interested in that because we obviously know there's going to be a difference between percentage fat mass and fat mass and just simply fat mass. So we kind of expect that. So we're not really interested in that. Uh, there's also no interaction between component and group. Um, and similarly, um, there's no interaction between time component and group. So putting all those three things together. However, there is a significant difference between time and components seen by um, this value here being below 0 0.05. And yeah, so, and then here, we can see that there's no significant difference between the two groups. Uh, the intervention, the control is seen by this really large p-value. So what we need to do is uh, check our assumptions again, as we did with our uh, other repeated measures. Okay, so we've got a value here. So homogeneity looks fine, everything above 0 0.05. So we can untick that. However, sphericity uh, doesn't look too good. So because this p-value is below 0 0.05, we haven't met the assumption of sphericity, and therefore we have to make some adjustments. So the same as we did in the repeated measures video, we need to look at this greenhouse geyser epsilon. And as you can see, all these values here are below 0 0.75. And therefore, in the sphericity of corrections, we need to select the green highs gauser. And if these values were above, then we'd use the Heinfeld correction here. Yes, we use that correction, and then uh, uh, that should update things here. Okay, so we've got a greenhouse Kaiser correction here for sphericity. So we're done with that, and we can unselect 
and go here. So as you can see here, which I didn't show in the last episode, because we've now changed this to a greenhouse geyser correction, you can see the degrees of freedom have changed and now they become a decimals. And that's how the examiner will know that you've made a correction when you include those degrees of freedom with decimals in your answer. Okay, so now that we've got our main data, let's look at kind of more, spe more specific uh, post hoc test. Okay, so what you want to do to just get the fat mass, what we want to do is just take out the component variable when you're kind of categorizing your data and then you just get your pre, post and three months. So we've got a pre here, so let's put our fat mass post and fat pass three month. And uh, that would just get you an effect for fat mass uh, on its own. But you can also do this um, when you've got all of them in there, it would just might be a bit more messy in the, in the post hoc. So remember at the start, when you're reporting the overall effect, make sure to have all these, all, all these variables in here. Okay, so now we can go into the post hoc and put time in because that's what we saw was the most, the most. Okay, so once you've got that for fat mass, so you can just take it one at a time, it'll make your life a lot easier. So firstly, we'll report that there was a significant difference between pre and post fat mass. And then you report the degrees of freedom, the t-value and the p statistic. As you can see, they're all significant because we saw that there's a significant effect on time. And again, the results were different pre and free month. Uh, as well as um, post and three months. So you can report all of this for fat mass. And then what you do is you can just take these three, three out and then do the same for lean mass and percentage mass. Uh, so yeah, so that's how you do it. So yeah, just remember when you're reporting the overall effect, just have all of those in and report the effect of time um, uh, and the, and uh, yeah, so I think time was the most uh, significant. So yeah, just report that. Uh, so let's yeah, jump into Word and see what that look like. And so I've got the data here. Let's just zoom in a bit. Okay, so firstly, there was no significant interaction bet between the time when the measurement was taken and the group the participants were in. So this is basically saying there's no effect, um, there's no interaction between time and the group the participants were in, so they control the interaction. Again, you can see this 1.19, seeing that we've made the um, greenhouse guys a correction for sphericity, and then we've reported the F value and the P. So it's as important to report the non-significant interactions as it is to report the significant. There was also seen, uh, this was also seen, so no significant effect in component and group. Again, uh, as well as no interaction between time and component, um, and no interaction between the three variables of time, so putting all together. But then you say, however, there was a significant effect of time when the measurement were taken in both control and the exercise group. Okay, so as you can see here, we've got our data here. So when we report it, so when you kind of take it one step at a time and do um, time for f uh, fat mass, lean mass, and percentage of fat. So you can write something, there was a significant difference between pre-fat mass, then you write your mean and standard error, and three month. And so yeah, you have to do all those interactions. Uh, so there'll be three that you need to report. So three T values, uh, with uh, your degrees of freedom, your T value, and then your P, and then the same for all of those. And uh, so you get three values for each component here. And then you do that basically, for the other ones as well. So you can do it one step at a time and you need to report everything. So I wrote this, just, this was the same for the uh, other ones, but I haven't got the value, so you can do that yourself. And yeah, so that's basically how you do a mixed design for Factorio Nova. Yeah, hope you uh, enjoyed that a little bit. And yeah, so I'll see you in the next video, whatever that is. So I hope you enjoyed that series on stats, hope it helped. And if you need any help, don't forget to comment or let me know and I'll um, hopefully explain it. So that's all for now. Uh, hope you have a good day and cheerio. <laughs>